it was probably this sporting disaster that persuaded our parents that we should channel our energies into pop music. We spent hours drawing guitars and a logo for our band name on a drum kit before graduating to making flat replica guitars cut out of large cardboard boxes. It was fairly easy to draw the volume controls, pickups, switches, and strings on the body of the guitar, but finding a strong enough, long enough piece of cardboard for the neck was always a problem. Some of our base creations only made it through one or two vigorous performances before the long neck would bend in two. Our cardboard guitars were more durable, especially if they were modeled after John Lennon's short-scale Rickenbacker, but I'd switched to drums by then. Having devised a satisfying way of imitating the rattle of a snare drum by placing a heavy piece of Meccano on a biscuit tin and whacking it with knitting needles or the handles of wooden kitchen spoons. You might wonder how we managed to produce any sound at all with our cardboard guitars <laughs> and biscuit tins, but the meteors cunningly concealed a record player behind the curtains in the front room. So we were able to sound almost as good as the Foremost or Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas. I'd picked up a few good performance tips when my mother had taken me to Granada, Kingston to see a any MS Records package tour, I was nine years old and still easily impressed. It was exciting just to see a collection of people who probably knew the Beatles personally. The bill consisted almost entirely of acts from Liverpool who were managed by Brian Epstein in the wake of the Beatles' initial success. Epstein had developed a stable of decent to middling talents who each seemed to have a minor song that Lennon and McCartney had probably written during their lunch hour. The show opened with a young singer who had a brand new handle that Brian Epstein had given him. It sounded less like a name than a lover's command and perhaps that was the intention. Tommy, quickly, unfortunately, quickly, was how the fickle public forgot him.